To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education. Hello my dear students, welcome to today's lesson. Today also I am going to discuss with you all electronics. Now in the previous chapters we looked at what semiconductors are and the doping process of semiconductors that gives rise to the P-type that is a positive type semiconductor and the N-type semiconductor, negative type semiconductor. There you all know both electrons and holes. Holes are equal to positive charges. There are two types of charge carriers and in the P-type semiconductor, the holes are the majority charge carriers, whereas the electrons are the minority charge carriers. Then in the N-type semiconductor, electrons are the majority charge carriers and holes are the minority charge carriers. So either way, both of them can move and because of that, electricity will be conducted. And when a P-type semiconductor and N-type semiconductor are connected together, that is by doping one side of a silicon semiconductor by a group 3 element and the other side with a group 5 element, we can get a P-N junction. And there you all know at the interface where you have the P and N junctions meeting, there will be a depletion layer. And this depletion layer acts as a voltage barrier. And to overcome the voltage barrier, you have to forward bias the PN junction. So you are familiar with forward biasing and reverse biasing. Thereafter, we discussed diodes. Diode is a PN junction diode where we have a PN junction and if you connect it in the forward biased manner, the current will flow through the diode in only one particular direction. So based on that, we were able to use diodes to rectify alternate current to direct current. So in the previous chapter, I discussed with you all the rectification of alternate current to direct current. And there we saw when we use one diode, only part of the alternate current cycle, that is the wave it is of an alternating current, you know, has the positive curves and the negative curves. And when you use one diode, only the positive curves are rectified or converted to direct current. But the rest of the curves, that is half of the cycle, does not get rectified. Therefore, we call it the half wave rectification. But to operate a particular device, you need to have continuous flow of current. So we need to have full wave rectification. That is what we are going to discuss now. So to understand full wave rectification, first we will look at an activity. So full wave rectification, activity full wave rectification. For that, these are the apparatus required. So if you look at the picture, you can see this is a bicycle dynamo. Now I have told you all this before. If you take a dry cell or a battery, that produces direct current. But a dynamo, which generates electricity, produces alternating current. That is why even to the household, the current that is supplied is alternating current. So here, bicycle dynamo, provides alternating current. Bicycle dynamo. Or else we can even use an alternating current generator. Either one is fine. Then we need diodes. Here not just one diode, we need four diodes. Or actually we will be using five diodes sometimes. Mainly we need four. If we don't use the Galvanometer, we can also use a light emitting diode or a light bulb, but either way we will need four diodes, the minimum. So we need four diodes. I will explain with modifications to the activity how we can use five diodes or even light emitting diodes, but here for the basic activity we will be using four diodes, one galvanometer galvanometer. 
then we need a rheostat. So you all know the functions of galvanometer and rheostat. Galvanometer is to measure the current and also the advantage of using the galvanometer is that it is a center zero galvanometer. So the pointer can deflect in both directions. Then you will be able to observe that the direction of the current flow. Whether the direction is changing or whether it's in one direction and if so, which direction. So that is the advantage of using a galvanometer. Then a rheostat is a variable resistor. Now variable resistors are used to control the current flow through the circuit. Now if the current flow through the galvanometer is too high, if the deflection is too much, we can adjust that using the rheostat. You can increase the resistance using the rheostat, then you can reduce the current flow. Then you will be able to observe it more clearly. So that is the purpose of using a rheostat. Then we have this one, the lead solder. This is a lead solder, solder and here we have the soldering iron, soldering iron. Now lead solders and soldering irons, if you want to fix some devices to a circuit board, you can't just stick them together, you need to use the soldering iron. Using that you heat the, this will become hot when you plug it in and switch it on. If this part will become hot, you are familiar with this. And then if you hold the lead solder to it, the lead will melt and it will come down as liquid lead. That will help to fuse or fix the parts. Now we need to fix the diodes into a certain bridge. So they are, to do that, we will be using lead solder and soldering iron. Then we need to have the connecting wires. Connecting wire. So we need a bicycle dynamo to generate alternating current. We need four diodes that will be connected in the form of a bridge that will act as the alternating current rectifier which converts the alternating current to direct current. Then to observe that the direct current is flowing through the circuit, we need the galvanometer, then a rheostat to control the current flow by changing the resistance, then lead solder and the soldering iron to fix and connect and fix the diodes into their positions. Thereafter, we need the connecting wires to complete the circuit. So those are the materials. I will explain the method in the next slide. So here we have the method. First I'll explain the diagram students. Look at the diagram here. Now can you see this one? That is the alternating current. I will write it as AC. So here we'll be using the bicycle dynamo. Bicycle dynamo to generate the alternating current. So this is the symbol for alternating current. Then here you can see two points X and Y are marked. Now we can see the direction of the current flow either this way. Here you can see there are two arrows indicated. That is to show that current can flow in both directions because this is alternating current. So at one instance current will flow from here to X and this way. The next instance from here Y and then to the rest of the circuit. So the direction of the current will change in the circuit. That is the alternating current. Then you can see here there are four diodes. This is how we connect it. The direction in which the diodes are connected is very important. Based on that only the current will flow through the circuit. So here you can see this pop is towards this way. You can see it's forward bias towards this direction because you know the symbol of diode, the current is allowed to flow this way. Now here the current will flow this way. Here the current will flow this way and here the current will flow this way. Is that clear? So if you take this point, from here current can flow away. From this point, you can see current flows this way. From this point also current flows that way. So if there is current flowing here, 
it will go through this diode but it will not go through this diode. Why this is reverse biased? This is forward biased. That is how you have to fix the four diodes. And this part, this whole thing together is known as a rectification bridge or a bridge circuit. So we can call this a bridge circuit. Bridge circuit. Then you can see all four diodes are connected together. And then here you can see this is the rheostat. And usually we set the rheostat to 100 ohms. The variable resistor 100 ohms. And then this way you can see if we have the galvanometer connector. And the connecting wire comes this way. And this particular wire is connected to this point and to this diode. Again from here there is a connection back to the alternating current generator. Is that clear? So like this diagram, the circuit diagram or what we call as the bridge circuit, we need to connect the four diodes, the alternating current generator, the rheostat and the galvanometer. Is that clear? So students, in the activity, what I'll be doing is I'll be labeling these diodes in this manner. Here, I'll be labeling this as D1. Then this will be D2, D3, and D4. So that is for us to identify the diode. So that it's convenient for us to identify and understand the process taking place there. So here, this will be D1, D2, D3, and D4. That is how we will be connecting the diodes. Okay. So then if we look at the method. The method solder the four diodes in the form of a bridge. So here you can see the four diodes are sol soldered in the form of a bridge. So that the anodes and cathodes are correctly connected. So you all know what anode and cathode is. If you take a diode, this is the anode, that is the cathode. So current flows from anode to cathode. You can remember that. So that is how we connect it, like in the diagram. Connect the rheostat and the center zero galvanometer as shown in the figure. Now connect the terminals of the bicycle dynamo or the alternating power source to the terminals X and Y and rotate the generator slowly. So if it is the bicycle dynamo, with the bicycle dynamo there will be a handle, we will be rotating that so the electricity will be generated within the bicycle dynamo and that will be an alternating current. Observe the deflection of the galvanometer. This is what we are going to observe. If the deflection is too large, adjust the rheostat to lower it. So I told you all that also. If the deflection is too much, you need to adjust the rheostat to reduce the current. Is that clear? So that is the procedure students. Like given in the diagram, you will have to make this bridge circuit, soldering the diodes and connecting them, everything using the connecting wires and the alternating current generator resistance or the rheostat and the center zero galvanometer. Then the observation is how the deflection occurs in the center zero galvanometer. Whether it's a continuous deflection if you're getting a constant value or varying value and how that happens. That is what you need to observe. So I'm sure you all can understand the method. Now let's go to the lab and do the activity. Okay students. So now we will do this activity in order to observe the full wave rectification. So to do this activity, I have all these materials. You are familiar with this. This is a rheostat. It is a variable resistor. So I have now set it to the maximum resistance in the rheostat. Here you can see I have connected one wire here and to this knob the second wire. So this part is the resistance coil. So that means it has been set to the full resistance. Then here I have the galvanometer. Now you all are familiar with the galvanometer. Look at the zero. This is in the middle. 
So we call it the zero center galvanometer. Now what is the advantage? Now when we use a zero center galvanometer, if the current is flowing in this direction, the pointer will move towards this direction, that is the clockwise direction. If the current is flowing in the opposite direction, then the indicator will deflect towards the opposite direction. So you can also observe in which direction the current is flowing or whether the direction of the current is changing. That is why we have to use a center zero galvanometer. Then here I have a bicycle dynamo. Now this is the dynamo when this part is usually touching the bicycle tire. So when you ride the bicycle, this cap rotates and then electricity will be produced. But the thing is the electricity produced by this bicycle dynamo is an alternate current. The current is an alternate current. You all know what an alternate current is. The direction of the current changes. As an example, you all remember the current that we receive from the power supply, the electricity provider to the household. It is an alternating current with a frequency of 50 hertz. So a similar current where the direction of the current changes is obtained from this bicycle dynamo. Then here I have a circuit board. Now I have already prepared this circuit board similar to the circuit given to you all. So I will explain that when we do the activity. So here the circuit board has the diodes all connected. There are four diodes connected together. This is also known as the rectification bridge which uses four diodes. So first we will try to understand what an alternating current is. To do that what I am going to do is I am going to connect one end of the galvanometer to the bicycle dynamo. The other terminal is connected to the rheostat like I said it is set to the highest resistance. Other terminal from the rheostat I will connect to the bicycle dynamo. Now here you can see one end is connected to the galvanometer this is connected to the rheostat. Now these two points are like the P and Q shown in this diagram. Now here you all have you can see the rheostat here 100 ohm rheostat then I have the galvanometer here. If we had a connection from Q to P and at that point we have connected the bicycle dynamo. So bicycle dynamo is going to be something like that. So bicycle dynamo between these two points P and Q, then the variable resistor galvanometer. This is to observe the alternating current. So observe the pointer or the deflector here when I rotate this head. Now when I do this, can you all see a deflection? What is happening there? Does it move in one direction? or is it moving in both direction. I am rotating it in the same way. Bicycle dynamo, I am rotating it in the same direction. Look at this indicator. What happens there? Can you all see the indicator moving to both directions? Can you see that? So at one point it comes this side, then to this side. It is rotating in both direction. That is an alternating current. So when there is an alternating current flowing, the deflector of the galvanometer or the point of the galvanometer will move in both directions. So the current that is coming from the dynamo is an alternating current. You all can understand that. Now what I am going to do is I am going to have the same connection here but this wire will have to be connected like shown in the circuit. Now here you all can see. Now look at the diagram students. I explained this to you all. There are four diodes. You have to make sure how the diodes are connected. The current will flow from here to here or here to here. You all know this symbol. You are familiar with the circuit symbol. So you know the direction of the current flow. In D1 current flow is this way. D2 current flow this way. D3 current flow this way and D4 current flow in that direction. So accordingly I have connected the circuit. Now these two terminals are for the alternating current, these two terminals. So I will be connecting the 
alternating current to those terminals. So, this is going to the alternating current. Now here alternating current. These are points X and Y alternating current source. The dynamo is connected. Then the four diodes have been connected in the correct manner. Then I have to have the rheostat connected there. So the rheostat will be connected here. So, now I have to connect the galvanometer to this point. So, galvanometer will be going to these two conducting wires. Now, can you all see the circuit clearly? Now you can see alternating current that is the bicycle dynamo. Then we have the four diodes connected in the exact manner. The directions like shown in the diagram. You all know to identify the terminal students. This is the P terminal. This is the N terminal. So by looking at the silver color or white color line you can identify the cathode or the N terminal. And accordingly I have connected the diodes. So, then the resistance or the variable resistor that is the rheostat and the zero center galvanometer. Now, look at the galvanometer carefully when I rotate the bicycle dynamo. So, here again I am going to rotate it in the same direction. Look at the deflector properly. So, now look at the galvanometer when I rotate it can you all see? Now earlier you were able to see the indicator go this way and this way very clearly. But now you can see the indicator going towards one direction. So that means the current is flowing in the same direction. Now here of course students there is a slight movement to the other side because of the way I am moving my hand because of the deflection. But the current you can see the reading is towards one direction only. Can you see the deflector moves only in one direction unlike the previous instance. So although an alternate current is being generated by the bicycle dynamo, when the current flows through the galvanometer, you can see that it is a current in the same direction. So, that means it is a direct current. So, the alternating current produced by the bicycle dynamo has been converted to direct current when it flows through the galvanometer. But another thing you all can see, although I keep on rotating it, you can see it goes to a higher value. But now when I keep on rotating the bicycle dynamo, you can see students the indicator or the deflector goes to a higher value, comes back to zero, goes to a higher value, comes back to zero. But it does not go in the opposite direction. So, that is how the alternating current is converted to direct current. This is known as full wave rectification. Now, if you look at this diagram, these are the diodes D1, D2, D3 and D4. When current flows in one direction that is through X, D1 and D3 will be forward biased. When the current flows through Y, D2 and D4 will be forward biased. At the same time, D1 and D3 will be reverse biased. So, you have to remember that. I will explain that process again to you all also. But you have to remember, although we have four diodes, the purpose of using four diodes is to make two diodes to be forward biased and the other two, they are reverse biased. So that they make sure that the current flows in the same direction, only in one direction through the galvanometer. So that the current becomes direct 
car. That is the function of this particular rectification bridge using 4 p-n junction diodes. Full wave rectification of current. Okay students, so I am sure you all were able to understand the observation during the activity. You would have seen the galvanometer clearly. What did you all see? There was deflection in the galvanometer and the deflection was only in one direction and also it was not a continuous fixed value. It was increasing, coming back to zero, increasing back to zero, increase, reduces back to zero like that. It was observed. But the deflection was observed only in one direction. So, alternating current, the direction of the current changes with time. But the output that we got, that is the current flowing through the galvanometer, was only in one direction. So, that is direct current. So, from that, what can you understand? The alternating current was converted to direct current. So, that is the observation and the conclusion. There is deflection in the galvanometer only in one direction. So that was the observation you all got. Then, what is the conclusion? The alternating current, alternating current has been converted to direct current by the circuit. The alternating current is converted to direct current by the circuit. So that is what we did in the activity. I am sure you all were able to observe that clearly. Now we will try to understand what happens during the activity. So for that, I will move on to the next slide where I have the circuit diagram with the diodes. But only thing is, instead of using the alternating current in the next circuit, I will be using batteries connected in two different ways. The terminals connected in two different ways. So before I go to that, now you all can remember students, if we look at the alternating current. Now the curve is like that. This is the current. This is time. So we have these positive curves and the negative curves. That is an alternating current. Alternating current. But in the galvanometer, you saw the deflection only in one direction. So what happens there? Here, after passing through the bridge, bridge, what happens? So here, that is current and time. So what will happen? The curves become like that. What we had as the negative curve comes to the other side. Now here, of course, all the current value, the maximum value will be the same. But you can see here, it starts from zero goes up, comes back to zero, goes up, come back to, comes back to zero. That is why 
when I was using the brain, you were able to see that the pointer, the deflection in the galvanometer, it was not a fixed value. It was changing. It was fluctuating between 0 and the maximum current value. You can remember that. So that is why we get a curve like this. So all the current, the alternating current has been converted to direct current. Now we will try to understand what happens in that bridge that converts this alternating current to direct current. So I'll move on to the next slide. In this activity, you will observe that the deflection in the galvanometer is only in one direction. So that is something we observe. So we observe that deflection in the galvanometer is only in one direction. That means that the current has been converted to a direct current. If four diodes are used in the form of a bridge in an appropriate manner and an alternating current is passed through it instead of the single diode used earlier, both half cycles of the alternating current can be made to flow in the same direction. Figure below illustrates such a bridge current. So I have already shown you all that. So both half cycles of the alternating current can be made to flow in the same direction. So we saw how the current changes. I drew the graph for you all from the alternating current to the direct current. So that is the figure below illustrates such a bridge current. If you are to draw that again, draw the plot here. This is current with time. So what will happen? Like that. This would be the maximum value. That is how you will get the curve. Everything will be positive curve. Is that clear to that? So the alternating current has been converted to direct current. That is the using the bridge circuit. Now we will try to understand what happens in the bridge circuit. Now here I have given a diagram. Now like I told you all before, instead of an alternating current generator or the bicycle dynamo, if we consider that we have connected a set of bright cells, a battery. The batteries are connected together, so we get, we generate 4.5 volts. Now here you can see the positive terminal is there. Negative terminal is there. So that means the current flow is going to be in this direction. I will use a different color. So here we are going to have the current flow in that direction. Why always current flows from positive to negative terminal. Now like I said the diodes are labeled D1, D2, D3, D4 and points X and Y are marked. Here you can see points P and Q are marked and instead of the rheostat we have a fixed value resistor there because we need to maintain the resistance only so that we can control the current flow. And here you can see this is an LED. This is a light emitting diode. Here B is a light emitting diode. Emitting diode or what we call as LEDs. Now instead of the galvanometer we have a light emitting diode. Now light emitting diodes also allow current to flow only in one direction. So here from the Symbol you can see these arrows denote that it is light emitting but this part you can see the current will flow this way that is from P to Q. Then only the LED will light. If the current flow is from Q to P then the LED is reverse biased. There will be no current flow. There will be no light emitted. So only when the current flows in this direction 
this LED B will light. So that is how you have to understand this circuit. This is similar to the activity. In the activity we had a galvanometer here. So from the activity you were able to understand that the current flows through the galvanometer and also here we had an alternating current generator that is the bicycle dynamo. But instead we have batteries and an LED. Rest of the circuit, especially the bridge circuit is the same. You can see the direction of the diodes. Both these are forward bias this way. These two are forward bias like that. So that you can remember. So we'll see what happens. Now in this current will flow to point X, flow through this particular conductor. It will reach this point. Now when it reaches this point, how will it flow? Can it go this way through D4? No. D4 is reverse bias for this current because the current is coming this way. But if you look at D1, current can flow through D1. So after coming to this point, since D1 is forward biased, current will flow in that direction. Then the current reaches this point. At this point, there are two paths you can see. Now look at D2, the symbol, the direction of D2. Current can flow from here to here. Current can flow in this direction, but not from here to here. So that means for this particular current, for this pink color arrow, if that is the current, D2 is reverse biased. So because of that, current will not flow this way. Instead, current will flow through this. It will go through point P this way and then here through B. That is the light emitting diode current will flow through it. Reach point Q. So because current is flowing through it, LED will light. And then current reaches point Q. It flows this way up to this point. This is the connector, connecting wire. So up to here, current will flow. Now when current comes to this point, there are two diodes, D3 and D4. What do you think? Both of them look like they can allow the current to flow through. Now if the current flows through D3, what will happen? It can come to this point. Again, it will come to this point. It can either go this way or this way. Now if the current flows this way, again it's going to be the same path. Already the current has flown through this point P and like that. So therefore current flows through this and flows back in this direction. Because it has to go back to the dry cell. So from this point current flows this way, comes to point Y, again reaches the bed. So that is one complete circuit. Here you can see current goes to X, then to this point, D1, then here P, the diode LED, B, point Q, then here, then through D3, Y and back to the battery. That is how current flows. So if we write the path, if I write the path for y'all, current starts from the battery, then goes to point X, then it goes through diode D1, diode D1, then it goes to point P, from there it comes to LED B, thereafter the point Q, then it flows through D3, reaches Y and back to the battery. That is the path of the current flow. Now in this, what are the diodes that allow current to pass through? You can see it is D1 and D3. So only D1 and D3 are forward biased. So here D1 and D3 
are forward biased. So what happens to D2 and D4? They are reverse biased. So you have to remember that. Only D1 and D3 allow current to flow through. But D2 and D4 are reverse bias. So you can understand that from this particular diagram. Here you can see this is how the current flows. So this is something you have to understand. When current flow direction is from this way through point X. Is it clear? So that is part of the alternating current. So we will take this as the positive curves of the alternating current. Then if we try to understand the explanation given, when a 4.5 battery and a LED bulb is connected as shown in figure below, the bulb lights up with its normal brightness. So you can see bulb lights up with its normal brightness. Here the LED is used on a lamp that is turned on when the current is flowing in one direction only. You have to remember LED is used so that it is turned on when the current is flowing in one direction only. When the point X is positive relative to point Y, so that is here point X is positive relative to point Y, D2, diodes D2 and D4 are reverse biased, while diodes D1 and D3 are forward biased. Very important. You have to remember that. So here you have to remember students, diodes D2 and D4 are reverse biased, D1 and D3 are forward biased. Then the current flowing through D1 passes through the bulb and reaches the negative terminal of the battery after passing through D3. So that is what I have explained here. You all have to remember this. Then I showed you all, now this is the path of the current. If you are given a diagram like this, you all have to understand how the current flows. Start from the battery, the positive terminal, we can also say positive terminal of the battery. Then to X, D1, P, the bulb, LED, then Q, D3, and point Y, and back to the negative terminal of the battery. Is that clear? So like I said, this is part of the cycle. Now if you show the curve relevant to this part of the circuit only, how is the Now it's going to be like this. This is current and that is time. So here I have used pink color. So although this is full wave rectification, we are looking at only part of the current flow. Why? The current flows only in one direction. We are using batteries. So only in one direction. So the positive current will flow through the diodes D1 and D3. So this is through D1, D3 and B. So this part of the graph, that is the current, positive current, flows through these three. Now only part of the current, alternating current, has been rectified. But this is going to be a full wave rectification. So what do we need to do next? We have to see when the current flows in the opposite direction, what happens. That is what I am going to explain in the next slide. So here, now look at this diagram. I will use blue color here. So this is for you all to understand what happens. Earlier I used pink color, that is for the positive current. 
Now look at this. The terminals have been changed. Here you have the positive terminal. Here you have the negative terminal. So the positive terminal towards the point Y is more positively the positive voltage. But here it is negative compared to the white point. So current will flow in this direction through Y. Where will it come to? It will come to this point. Now look at D2 and D3. Obviously you can understand D3 is reverse biased. Current cannot go that way. So it is reverse biased. So how will the current flow? It will flow through D2. And it will reach this point. Again here what can happen? There is one path this way. The other path that way. Can the current flow this way? Look at D1. No. Why? D1 is reverse biased. Current cannot flow that way. It can't go this way. So because of that, the current has to flow this way through P again through bulb B. So now also the LED lights. Then current will come to this point through Q. It will come back here, reach this point. But now again you can understand D3 will not allow the current to flow. Why? Because already current flows this way. So because of that D3 will not allow the current to flow. Instead D4 will let the current to flow. And current will reach this point and through here to Y and back to terminal of the battery. The negative terminal of the battery. So how is the current flowing? Y then comes to this point. D2, P, the bulb that is the LED B. Then Q back to this point. D4 and to X and the battery. So like earlier, if we denote the path. It starts from the battery. Here the battery, the positive terminal has been changed. Here also it is going to be the positive terminal. But the positive terminal is connected to Y. Then from Y current flows through D2. Now note that. Then from D2 it goes to point P. Then from there to diode LED B. And then it comes to point Q. You can see that here in the diagram. Point Q and then it comes to D4 and then to point X and back to the battery. That's how current flows. So in this instance, if you look at the diodes D2 and D4, they are forward biased. So both D2 and D4 are forward biased. Forward biased. Whereas D1 and D3 are reverse biased. Is that clear student? Here D2 and D4 are forward biased, but D1 and D3, they don't allow the current to flow. They are reverse biased. But if you look at the LED B, that is still forward biased. Now if you compare the previous slide and this slide, in both instances, this part is the same. Now here you can see this part is the same. Always current flows from P, LED B and to Q. Even in the previous slide. If I go back, you can see here students. Can you see this? This part is the same. P through the bulb LED B and then Q. So current always flows through this in the same direction. 
in both the instances current flows through the same direction so what has happened the alternating current flows as direct current through this so now if you draw the plot for this point how will you get the plot so if i draw the graph below we will have the current then you will have time so now what happens only the blue color curves flow through the bulb that is led so here we will have like that is that clear earlier we had the pink color graphs in these positions now we have the blue color graphs that is the negative color so if we combine them together now if i go back to the other slide you can remember i showed you all the graph now here you can see this is the positive current earlier when the terminal positive terminal is connected to x but now here we have that is empty this has become the positive current so if we combine them together now if we instead of having the batteries if we have an alternating current flowing we will have both the graphs together so there will be continuous direct current flowing through the led you all have to understand that so this is what happens in a full wave rectification let's read the discussion given now if the circuit is reconnected with the negative terminal of the battery connected to point x and the positive terminal connected to point y as shown in figure b so here we have reconnected the circuit with the negative terminal of the battery connected to point x and positive terminal connected to point y the bulb would light up with the same brightness that's important why still through the led bulb b there is current flowing in the same direction in this case the diodes d2 and d4 are forward biased and d1 and d3 are reverse biased therefore the current coming from the positive terminal of the battery passes through the diode d2 the bulb and diode d4 and flows to the negative terminal of the battery in both cases the current through the bulb flows in the same direction so the current through the bulb flows in the same direction now like i said if we combine instead of having batteries so let's say instead of of having batteries if an alternating current source is connected is connected then there will be full wave rectification full wave rectification how will that happen i will draw the two graphs here this is current that is also current i'm going to two 
I'm going to draw two graphs. This is time, time. So earlier we had the pink color cycles. Those are the half cycles. So we had like that, like that. And the same graphs were obtained here also. Here also we got the same graph. At the same time, in the second diagram, now we had the rest of the half cycle that way. But after rectification, what happened to this blue color cycle? That also came to this point. Now can you see? This was alternating current. This is when current flows through X. This is when current flows from Y. Is that clear? But in both instances through the bulb, that is the LED bulb, current flows in the same direction. So this is alternate current, that is direct current. So this is through bulb B. Current flow is in the same direction. Is that clear? So this is how we convert alternating current to direct current. So this is alternating current, this is direct current. AC to DC conversion. And both parts of the waves have been rectified. That is why we say full wave rectification. Is that clear? But still, you all can see students, there is fluctuation in the current. At certain points, the current touches the time axis, x axis. That means the current is zero. You were able to see that when we did the activity. You saw the deflection in the galvanometer. It was in the same direction, but it did not remain constant. It was moving. It was deflecting between zero and the value of current. Can you all remember that? So that is how a rectification bridge functions and how the alternate current is converted to direct current. So in these two slides, we try to understand what happens using batteries and an LED. But in the activity, you all can remember, we use the alternating current source and galvanometer. Alternating current source instead of the battery and the galvanometer instead of the LED. So these two slides are to explain to you all what happens during a rectification process or how the rectification bridge functions. In one instance, the diodes D1 and D3 are forward biased. In the second instance, D2 and D4 are forward biased. But always through the device, that is the bulb here, current flows in this direction, P, B and Q. That did not change in both instances. The same thing in the galvanometer. The galvanometer was here. So current flew in the same direction through the galvanometer. It flows in the same direction. So there the alternate current has been converted to direct current. Is that clear student? So with that I will move on to the next slide. So then again, these are the diagrams given in your textbook. The same thing what I explained to you all. Now you can see in this first diagram, the current flow. X to this point, D1. D1 is forward biased. Then you can see D2 is reverse biased. D3 is forward biased. But the current flows from X, D1, then to P, through B to Q, then back to D3 and Y, back to the battery. So always, like we said before, through this, the current flow is in this direction. Through the LED, current flows from P, B, Q direction. Now, when you change the terminals of the battery, in the second diagram, 
Now, when I explained, I used a blue color, I used blue color arrows, but here in the diagram, it's pink color. Don't get confused, but you can see the direction of the arrows. Why it comes to this point? Now, here you can see D2 is forward biased. Then the current flows to P, then through B, the current flow is in that direction. Same direction as before. And then to point Q, back to here and D4 is forward biased. And to point X and back to the battery. So in the first diagram, that is A, D1 and D3 are forward biased. D2 and D4 are reverse biased. But here in the second diagram where we have the bridge circuit, the second diagram where the terminals of the batteries are changed, D2 and D4 are forward biased, D1 and D3 are reverse biased. But always B is forward biased. Forward biased. And current flows through the B in the same direction. P, B, Q, that direction. So the alternate current that is given here becomes direct current here. We looked at the graph also. How the two half cycles become the positive current, direct current. Is that clear to you? So you have to understand this procedure. This is what happens in a rectifier circuit. So with that, I'll move on to the next slide. Now here you have something for extra knowledge. This is to understand why we use 4.5 volt battery. In figure 11.15, a 4.5 volt battery is used to light 2.5 volt bulb. So this is something you need to understand. We use a 4.5 volt battery to light up a 2.5 volt bulb. You might be wondering why. The reason is there are four diodes. And you can remember the silicon diode. What is the potential barrier? 0 0.7 volts. Potential barrier is 0 0.7 volts. So silicon diode, the potential barrier is 0 0.7 volts. Now in both instances, there are only two diodes that are forward biased. Either D1 and D3 or else D2 and D4. So we need to overcome the potential barrier of two diodes. So if we multiply that, this by two diodes, what is the value? It is going to be 1.4 volts. Now we have a total of 4.5 volts. For that, we need to give the diodes 1.4 volt. So if you get the difference, it is going to be 3.1 volt. So we have a bulb of 2.5 volts. So we will need that for the bulb. And also we need the bulb to light. So that is why we need to use a 4.5 volt battery. So in figure 11.15, a 4.5 volt battery is used to light a 2.5 volt bulb because the current in each case flows through two diodes producing two diodes producing 2 into 0 0.7 that is 1.4 volt voltage drop. That is going to be a voltage drop. Due to this drop across the diodes, the available voltage for the bulb is 4.5 minus 1.4, that is 3.4 volts. I'll repeat that, that is 3.1 volts. If a 3 volt battery is used instead of the 4.5 volt battery, the remaining voltage of 3 minus 1.4 is equal to 1.6 will not be sufficient to light the bulb. So if we just had 3 volts, then that won't be enough to light the bulb. So then we won't know whether there is current flowing through the bulb or not. That is why we have to use a 4.5 volt battery. 
Is that clear, student? Then only you will see the bulb be light. So that is something you need to understand. So with this student, I am going to end this chapter. But as I start the next chapter also, I will again discuss with you all the full wave rectification process. How the curve changes, we will try to recall that again and then we will continue with the lesson. To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education.